Hello everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate the lab move in matter and this is about the carbon cycle okay and how the carbon cycle it moves throughout the environment right and we're going to simulate a part of that all right <clears throat> so in the previous lesson you learned about how energy flows in an environment matter which is made up of atoms also moves through the environment right but instead of flowing through the environment like energy does you guys know that matter moves in cycles right so this lab is going to demonstrate a part of that right so the, what you see in front of you um, is basically your items that you're going to use for this lab and you can do this with home uh, materials right of course since we're staying at home I have to use a lot of home materials but um, if we were in the lab we would use more professional grade things like Erlenmeyer, Erlenmeyer flasks okay and test tubes and uh, calcium carbonate powder but there's substitutes that we can use. I'm gonna quickly go through the items that I have here so you can get an idea of what we have here. Uh, Bromothymol Blue, okay. Uh, I ordered this on Amazon, it's very cheap, like six to seven dollars or 700 yen. Uh, normal vinegar, right? Everyone should have that in your household. Uh, balloons, for this one I had to stretch it out quite a few times for it to work. All right, um, calcium carbonate, you could use uh, chalk, but you need to make sure that you have calcium carbonate chalk. Okay, there are other kinds of um, chalk that is made up of calcium sulfate. It wouldn't, this experiment will not work with calcium sulfate. All right, or uh, organic lime, right? So I've tried this with organic lime. You can buy this in a plant store and, and it should work, right? I, I tested this already. Okay, uh, a 20 ml milliliter test tube, which I'm using the equivalent of a little hundred, uh, sorry, a $1 plastic tube, right, that you can buy, uh, very cheap. And for the 250 ml Erlenmeyer flask, I'm using this, um, also this larger bottle here. All right. Some additional materials that I have here that is not on the handout are this is a large cup funnel just to ensure that um, we don't get any mess with the uh, lime or the organic calcium carbonate and this normal measuring beaker, right? Because we need to measure some liquids here. Okay, so let's get started. Be uh, first thing you wanna do is label your uh, all the materials that you have and of course you always want to um, exercise safety right uh, even in your house at least you can wear some gloves ideally you have your uh, goggles your lab coat girls would have their hair um, and a ponytail right but um since these are kitchen materials for this uh, for this time uh, gloves would be enough but always exercise uh, lab safety right okay <clears throat> good so let's move on to the next part the actual process all right so the first thing you're going to do is measure 15 grams of calcium carbonate powder so for this we need a little you can use a, a normal um uh, kitchen scale right and um uh, the the handout says filter paper but you can also use normal uh plain paper right and uh, if you add it here and then you reset it to zero and we open up the calcium carbonate right? so slowly you can uh, pour it in until you get 15 grams of calcium carbonate so you always have to pour slowly and gently make sure they don't All right, so the one I'm using are little shards of calcium carbonate. All right, as you get to the 15, slowly start pouring. Try to be as accurate as possible. All right, perfect. 
So we have our little calcium carbonate. And once you finish with that, you can set it aside. You can set it aside for now. You won't be needing it anymore. So uh, once you have your calcium carbonate, you can pour the calcium carbonate into your big flask, okay? So here, hopefully this will work. If there's, there might be some big shards, but at least we can get the gross amount. Now we want to slowly pour inside. All right, should be working out pretty well. Perfect, all right. You don't need your little filter paper anymore. Try to get all of it in there. All right, and you no longer need your little funnel. All right, the next thing you wanna do is to measure 50 milliliters of vinegar into the flask. So we're gonna get some organic vinegar, right? So I'm gonna pour up to 50 ml right here, the red line that says 50 ml. You see, you always wanna make sure the units are, are compatible with what your experiment is, right? 50 milliliters, right? You also wanna check for the meniscus. Ideally, you will need to um, look at this at a very parallel level, okay? So you won't uh, get a, an error Okay, but just roughly 50 is okay. And let's pour it in. Now, before you pour it in, you need to have ready your balloon because the reaction that I'm going to show you and that's gonna occur right now, uh, you need to trap the products that are going to appear. All right, so <clears throat> add 50 ml to the flask. You want to gently tilt uh, the early mayor flask and pour in the vinegar. All right, as much as you can. And quickly try to put the, the balloon into, whoops, the balloon into the bottle. All right, got some of my, all right. So this could take some time, but I want to show you what's happening in the reaction at the bottom. Oh, I can start to see some stuff. So you can start to see some bubbles. All right, right, let's. Uh, you can shake it around because some of the uh, material, since we're not using a flask, there's a lot of material, uh, calcium carbonate at the bottom. So you would need to move it around to increase the surface area of the reaction. All right. What's important is that the balloon is there and you get the product that is being created. All right, I'm gonna shake it a little and I hope you can see it well. I'm gonna go into the, to the camera so you can try to see the bubbles. You can see some bubbles forming, all right? So, you can leave this for around 10 to 15 minutes. All right. Let me try to give you a good. There you go. So you can see something is occurring. What is occurring? Right? What do you think is occurring? Let me try to. All right, so we're gonna leave this reacting for a while. Okay, you can see, if you see, the balloon is starting to get It's starting to take shape, right? So it looks a little fatty there, okay? Of course, the purity of the calcium carbonate will yield more 
gas. All right, so we'll wait. We'll wait like 10 to 15 minutes. All right, let's leave it there. Well, I let around eight minutes pass by. Now, I do want to mention a couple of things. Make sure that your, that your uh, balloon is secure. So I had a little bit of um, escape of gas, but it should be okay for the experiments. Because um, if you compress it, you can have a lot more of the gas that we want to collect. Also guys, uh, the beaker that you put the vinegar, you can rinse, or sorry, the measuring cup, you can rinse and pour uh, tap water in it because we're that's where we're going to use right now. All right, so for your test tube or your small little container, <clears throat> right, we're going to fill this up almost to the top, almost reaching the top of the container. All right, so let's do that. So I'm not saying any fixed amount of water because it's going to vary depending on your your um, container size, right? So let's try to fill this up all the way to the top. All right, almost to the top. So you can see almost to the top. Maybe I can add a little bit more. So you really want to have it Maybe that's a little too much. Okay, that should be okay. And I apologize that you couldn't see the, the beaker in the last video I was mentioning about the 50 ml, which is basically here, all right? Okay, that's 50 ml for the vinegar. So let's continue on. So you have water filled all the way to the top of the of the container right now we're going to use bromthymol sorry we're going to use bromthymol blue all right you can set your water aside now and we're going to add around 15 drops of bromthymol blue right this is a chemical indicator that turns yellow when exposed to certain chemicals like carbon dioxide okay so let's check out what happens so first let's Count 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. So that's a nice green tone to it. So let's mix it up first so we could. Let's mix it up, up and down. You don't want to agitate it too much, right? Always mix softly your solutions. All right. So now we're gonna try to, so this part's very, you have to be very careful and quick, right? Let's try to transfer the balloon with as much gas as possible onto this bottle okay and let's see what happens so let's try this out so you want to squeeze your container as much as you can to try to get as much uh, gas in there right and then pull out your container all right don't worry about that you could set aside your chemical there now slowly, this was going to be a toughie here. All right, you will need your fingers to prop it open. All right, let's try to do this softly. Remember, you have a lot of solution in here. So you might get a little messy. Okay, let's try this out. You know. All right, 
success. Right? So be careful. Try to put the balloon all the way down so no so you don't get any gas escaping. Right? Alright, success guys. Now, we wait some more, right? We can, this will take maybe like 20 minutes, okay? All right, make sure, make sure that your balloon isn't stuck at the neck so the gas could be transferring up and down. All right, very good. So now we wait and see, let's look at our initial color. All right, let's look at the initial color of the bottle. And let's be checking on in every five minutes. Okay, so let's set a timer, five minutes. Hello everyone, we're back again. <clears throat> so the color has changed after a time lapse of 25 to 30 minutes. I have indicated um, by the pictures here. So you can see that the gas is doing something to the liquid, right? It, takes, it, take, it does take time. But you can see there was a change from a dark a turquoise or a dark green coloration of the solution into a yellowish uh, tone, right? Indicating that something has occurred in the solution. So this concludes the actual experiment, okay? We will discuss in the uh, classroom, okay? Thank you guys, thank you for watching on how to show the carbon dioxide um, or the carbon cycle.